Greetings! Anton here with another H3 VR devlog. I hope you all are having a wonderful week thus far. Um, we've got a slightly shorter video for you this week as, um, as well, a bunch of the things that I've been working on aren't quite ready for showtime. I was focused more on making sure that they're ready for next week, which is going to be the update 46 dropping, than making sure that they were, you know, put together enough to show you today. But I thought I would go over what, uh, what's what been going well, uh, what's taking a little longer than I'd like it to, and uh, basically give you a, uh, a, a sort of sit rep on what it looks like it's going to make it into update 46. Uh, so I've been working on the alternate weapons for the uh, the new sort of soldier wiener bots um, that you folks were kind enough to vote on uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I actually fibbed to you. I said I was going to make the, the sort of top two voted uh, firearms in each category, when in reality I'm going to make the top four, uh, especially considering that a bunch of them came within such a hair's breadth. I was quite shocked, actually, on just how even the voting for, say, things like the SMGs uh, were. So in terms of what, in terms of the, the sort of chibified bot weapons that I'm making for them, uh, the rifles, they're going to have an AKM, an M4A1, an M16A2, and an M14. Uh, the SMGs, they're going to have a, a Micro Uzi, a Mac 11, uh, a P90, and an MP5A2. Uh, for their shotguns, we're going to do a SPOS-12, a break action, uh, a Pancor jackhammer, and an 870, like, shorty. And, uh, and for the handguns, it's going to be a, a big revolver, a Deagle, a 1911, and a Glock. So that should end up being a, a really great sort of functionality range uh, between all of those. And it'll be really useful, um, even just in terms of the first couple that I have. Uh, functioning in abstract, seeing how the, the sort of bot's fire control work and how with uh, a, a, a firearm with more ammo in it, they can they can basically bunker you way more effectively. So there's going to be a lot of difficulty tuning uh, needing it to make sure that, you know, you don't just turn a corner, get caught behind a box, and just have a, a bot just absolutely spray you down with no way out of that situation. So uh, some tweaking is needed. Um, to go along with them, the other thing that I've been trying to make more interesting with the, with the soldier bots is that their, their macro pathing works quite well. When I sort of give them sort of engagement range preferences, they get closer to you and they get further away how I'd want. But when they're in that sweet spot where, the, where they're about as far away from you as they want to be, especially if you're static, they're always static. They don't go, they, they basically don't do two types of things that I'd like to see them be able to do. They don't juke as, as sort of like micro movement around their waypoint when they perceive that you're aiming at them. So they become, in a sense, very easy to hit in a lot of those situations. And they don't ever attempt to sort of dynamically flank or sort of like, like sort of tick up and be like, I've been here for a certain amount of time. The player's been where they are for a certain amount of time. I should take some proactive action to try to flush the player to sort of change the combat dynamics. So I've been working on ways to do that in, in ways that don't just look like the bot has just decided to suicide suddenly. I want, I want to make it more tactical than that, which uh, ends up being a little more difficult in terms of doing the, the computation efficiently for it to ping and analyze elements of the, uh, the nav mesh. I may just have to pre-compute some things to make that a little more tenable. Um, so yeah, so, and then obviously the, the sort of configurability of them. This is definitely going to be in uh, next week, which is going to be uh, the, the sort of spawner panel for them that right now is just like two different buttons, uh, is going to get more complex. And there's going to be a couple columns, probably with a bunch of like turn on off radio buttons to make it so that you can basically pick exactly what you want to to, to spawn in that wave. Um, and it'll be a mix and match system, similar to how currently you can like hit the button and spawn one bot, like a group of bots a couple times. Uh, if you want to spawn two configurations of fellows, you'll be able to do so. Um, I don't know if this will be in 46, but the, the arena scene that you guys are fighting them in now, the, 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 the newer one, um, was primarily a light baking and, a, and performance test scene. It isn't 
designed with the sort of intentionality that one would want in a uh, in a combat environment. Um, and I've been working on another test scene to test out some other graphical features, but in the process I'm making it a little more like a combat arena. So that will either go in next week or shortly after, a week or two after in a beta first. Um, it'll depend on whether I, I get it done because the current scene's a little claustrophobic. I like elements of it. I like the, the, the way the elevation change works and the difference between really narrow hallways and some slightly more open arenas. Um, but obviously it, 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 was, it was never designed for how we're using it right now. Um, so it, it will get replaced. Cool. Um, stuff I'm working on in parallel with that is that I, I had originally intended this week to actually do the Unity 5.6 upgrade, and then I got a horrible case of food poisoning, and it completely derailed my schedule for that several days, the whole week, um, and I've just been juggling things around. So I'm actually going to be doing that uh, this Monday or Tuesday. If it goes well, Update 46 will be a Unity 5.6 update. If it doesn't go well, it won't. So I've sufficiently parallelized what I'm doing so that I have a fall back plan if I do that upgrade and freaking everything breaks. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Um, yeah, and the, beyond that, just doing some other, some lighting mode test stuff and a ton of environment asset work. Um, and what I mean by that is not just making the stuff that I do from scratch, like my tile sets, um, but also sort of collecting large amounts of assets off of the asset store and converting them in various ways, altering their collision and bringing them over to my system, swapping their materials over to the materials that use the shaders that H3 uses, um, and basically just optimizing things, making sure that they're not using textures wastefully. I'm going to do probably a, a future devlog video for this next month's cycle on that process um, so that those of you who make games or just are interested in the, uh, the process of making them can see what I'm doing uh, to sort of build up that library of assets for future environments uh, in a way that once again, it's about sort of like maximal efficiency, both draw-wise and data on disk and what's loaded into RAM while still looking great. Cool. Oh, and then this is the other thing that is, is a longer term thing because I'm still trying to figure out how I want some of this to work. Is that those of you who've spent a good amount of time uh, fighting, you know, the wiener bots both in upgraded meat grinder and in the arena, know that there's a few inconsistencies when it comes to damage, especially with the melee weapons. Um, it seems like some of them don't really damage the bots or don't damage them enough, whereas other ones just wreck them. And a lot of this relates to the fact that H3 currently has what I would call two parallel um, sort of damage transmission systems in it. Um, one is entirely based on physical parameters and is the system by which um, bullet penetration and ricochet, losing energy, bullet drop, all of that happens. Um, it's very physically accurate, which also means it's very difficult to control. And the output, the, literally the, the, da the damage output from that system is like megapascals per root meter, which is like, how do you even parse how that should affect various sorts of material aggregates? So certain types of damageable things in H3 use that system raw. Things like shatterable objects, um, like, you know, the Sarge cans and the pots. Um, some of the bots use them, like the, the hydraulic bots um, and Slicer actually use this for their damage. And this is incidentally why small arms don't damage them very well is because small like handgun submachine guns and handguns don't deliver that much muzzle energy to their targets compared to rifles um and in addition the the way that damage system is set up is that uh, uh any round that penetrates into the object does a lot more damage um so any round that's not capable of penetrating uh that doesn't do anything and while this was and this is how I basically approach damage to begin with in the game. And while it's accurate um, in many ways, it's not very fun and it's not easy to balance. It's, 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 I'm always working indirectly with, uh, with essentially a stack of really complex formulas 
Um, and so it's really hard to make it so that things respond to damage how you would expect them to. Sitting alongside this was a, a super decimation of it that's much closer to your old school like health style damage system where things like the play like and th this was actually put into place because I needed a way to damage the player initially like you've got a certain amount of life you get hit by th you know rounds do an abstracted amount of damage per hit over penetration doesn't add to that damage etc and then I used that system for things like the worst world bots because they were more sort of arcadey and fun and I wanted to make the amount of damage that weapons do a little more I guess you could say perceivable by the player, but what I've realized in the process is that it's a bit too coarse, and what I essentially need to do is create something in the middle of those two systems that is still a little more abstracted or is looking at uh, a set of sort of pre-configured tables for the type of initial contact and then over sort of penetration through an object per second or something that various rounds should do. And then I should scale that abstraction based upon remaining muzzle energy on a curve. So that like a round that goes through, that, that uses the ballistic system to say, go through wood and be slowed down and alter trajectory and then hits a target at say 25% of its initial muzzle velocity uses the abstracted damage system so that it's a little more predictable and I can tweak the numbers a bit and get the sort of game design balance one would want out of fighting game agents, but still have the physical ballistic system driving how that damage is scaled. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but that's, I'm, I'm in the process of doing that. It's a pretty big systemic change and so I'm doing it very slowly and carefully so I don't break uh, existing modes and existing systems, but it's gonna be it's it's gonna just be necessary um, for making combat with the you know with the bots feel good um, because there there still needs to be this scaled range and difference between small arms and and high damage rounds, but the the system needs to be able to handle the extremes at the end better. Like a bunch of folks have complained about, like I pull out a Barrett fifty and shoot things with it, and it does not do what I expect that to do. Um, and that's a function of the abstracted damage system, and so that's being worked on. Cool. So yeah, so that's that's part of, that's one of the longer research projects that I'm working on. And then, what else do I have on my list to talk about? Oh yeah, and then the last thing I wanted to qu quickly mention, not bit, make a big thing of, but some of you may have seen that I made a post a couple days ago regarding Pimax and their Kickstarter, where they had used a couple seconds of H3 video uh, without permission. And I had found out about this when watching their Kickstarter. Um, as you might imagine, quite frustrating. Um, I won't get into the sort of back and forth and conversations and tiffs uh, that occurred on, uh, on our Vive about this, um, just because I don't think they're productive at this point. Uh, all that matters is that I've spoken with them now. We've come to an amicable resolution over the situation. They explained to me how it happened. Um, as I mentioned on RH3, just a, a tip for those of you who are business folk who happen to outsource things um, or use partners to produce media for them is always vet what they produce. And uh, if they say they're going to do something, don't necessarily take them at their word. Um, because if they're producing media for you, you're on the hook for that. Uh, but yeah, involving the, their, actual, their actual headset and technology. Um, truth be told, especially in talking with a, 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 a couple other dev friends of mine, I'm still, I'm a little suspicious of some of the claims of, of what the headset can do and the amount of data that it can push, etc. But I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, especially because, you know, they've got enough money to make it. So we'll see what comes of it. And I'm going to be checking out the headset when it, uh, when it comes out to see what it's like and what sort of things have to be done to, uh, to make the game work on it. Uh, despite my initial anger over the situation, I believe in giving people a second chance if they're cool about things. And in this case, I, I, I got a really wonderful apology and a detailed explanation of how the situation arose. 
uh, which is rarer than it should be uh, in business. So, so, so yeah, so that's all, that's all that needs to be known about that. Water under the bridge. So yeah, so with that, um, just those of you who are on the beta branch, um, I'm probably going to push another build or two quickly over this weekend to finish pa uh, testing my build Delta Ink stuff before doing this 5.6 jump. Um, it appears that even though I uncompressed the asset bundles, I haven't gotten any reports from folk of, sl of slowed down loading, so that is a great freaking sign because this will make pushing updates, especially very small atomic ones, much easier. Well, I will stop ran rambling, looking at the recording here. I, you know, this was supposed to be a short video, and here I've just gabbed away for like 16 minutes. So that's more than enough of your Friday that I've taken up already. So I hope you all have a uh, wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Peace.